We hope you all are starting to see that fungi are pretty amazing. Not only do they keep our global ecosystems running, but some of them even have the potential to help us solve some of society's greatest challenges. Today, we're going to be talking about fungi and biofuels. These days, a lot of people have heard the term biofuel, but few actually know how biofuels are made and the roles fungi have played in the development of new methods of biofuel production. The term biofuel refers to a fuel that is derived from biomass, that is, from living things, or perhaps more accurately, recently living things, not fossil fuels. This is great because burning biofuels is thought to be carbon neutral. In other words, the amount of carbon emitted by burning these fuels is exactly equal to the amount of carbon taken out of the atmosphere when the plants used to create the fuel were growing. There are three main types or generations of biofuels. Today, we're gonna to be talking about two of them. First generation biofuels use a source of simple sugars like corn or sugarcane. These substrates are processed and put into solution with single celled fungi called yeasts. There are many species of yeasts and they're not all closely related. The term yeast doesn't refer to a closely related group or clade of organisms, but instead refers to many unrelated fungi that share a similar single celled lifestyle. The most common yeast used in first generation biofuel production is Saccharomyces cerevisiae, the same yeast used to leaven bread and ferment beer. These fungi are capable of harvesting energy from the simple sugars through a process called fermentation. Amylose, or starch, dissolves in water to form glucose, a simple sugar, and the starting material for alcoholic fermentation. The result is ethanol, a combustible biofuel, as a byproduct. However, like I said earlier, to make first-generation biofuels, you need grain, and lots of it. In fact, about 40% of the corn grown in the U.S. is used to make ethanol. That's a lot of acreage tied up in biofuel production. And with a growing human population, we need all the food producing cropland we can get. While first generation biofuels are made from simple sugars, second generation is a little more complicated. This process starts with a non-edible biomass like grass, wood, or straw. The advantage of starting with a non-edible substance is that there is no competition with food supplies. Fungus, like Trichoderma, are used to break down the cellulose in these biomasses through a process called sacrification, thereby creating bioethanol. This fungus is actually so good at its job that it broke down the cotton in U.S. soldiers' clothes during World War II. Trichoderma is so impressive because it can break down lignocellulose, a mixture of celluloses made of substances like hemocellulose, lignin, and pectin. Lignocellulose matters when it comes to biofuel production. It has been found to be the most abundant renewable biomass because it is produced during plant photosynthesis. There are over 200 billion metric tons available. Progress has been made in the development of alternative energy sources to fossil fuels, which have been linked to climate change. The first and second generation biofuels we just talked about are hopeful to make an impact and reduce our carbon emissions. More research needs to be done on creating biofuels cheaply while producing high yields, and fungus can be used to do this. Alternatives to Chechoderma are being explored too. We hope you learned a little bit about what fungus can do to move towards a cleaner future. Thank you for joining.